everyone, I'm Glenn, they're Glenn, he's Frank, and we're going to talk about painting. I'm going to talk about painting. Here we are, and now we're starting off with the canvas paper, and I taped it down to a piece of masonite board with just some blue tape so that it stays there. Um, I'm doing a self-portrait because I find that doing self-portraits is the best way to practice a technique as opposed to try to impress somebody. If I were to be painting a picture of someone else, I'd want to make sure that they come across in a good light and make sure that I make them look better if they don't already look really great or like leave out blemishes and things like that. Um, so I find that doing self-portraits mean that I'm just going to paint me. like. I don't really have to worry about it. I'm not going to insult me when I, I look at it. So that really helps work on technique. And if you look back in history, the great masters, a lot of them did a lot of self-portraits. And one, self-portraits, your, yourself is the easiest model you can get. And two, you know exactly what you're trying to do when you're making that reference. If I try to tell someone, make a goofy face, they'll make what they imply as a goofy face or they think is a goofy face, but maybe it's not the face I was looking for. Like I want more creases in the cheeks or maybe I want to get more of a furrowed brow or something like that. So it becomes a lot harder to just have them move back and forth and, and working with your model and making sure that both of you come out happy. Um, Subsequently, this is also something that becomes a lot easier if you're trying to work on different um, facial structures and things like that. So um, just keep that in mind as we go through here. Anyway, let me catch you back up on where this painting is at this moment. Uh, in the beginning, I was putting in small marks to just represent where I wanted the face to begin. And then I blocked in where I thought everything fit. I didn't put a, a grid down. I didn't put anything like that. It was just sort of off the cuff how I felt. Then after that, I started to build in a little bit more of the shape. However, at this stage, you still want to make sure that you're keeping everything pretty mid tony You don't want to get super dark. You don't want to get super light until you're starting to flesh out the majority of it. So here, like, yes, I, I just said I don't want to become super dark, but I did add black as the hair color. But that is because now after some pieces are in there, like I don't want to get super light and dark with the face yet because I don't know what's there. But I do want to sort of set the the stage, you could say, compositionally, where, all right, this area is the shadow, and like this area is the light. I could have done a background and thrown that into there, but it wasn't really what I was focusing on for this session. Um, I'm just trying to get back into painting and, and working with portraits again. So here, as we're sort of going through this, we're starting to see that there's these lighter s sides coming through and then you're adding in the, the dark the dark shadows and that's what really starts to bring out and push forward and pull back each of these pieces or each of these components of this painting um, so moving forward in this section trying to work on the eye and one thing that I really noticed was the eye was significantly far to the right I guess for, for lack of a better word um, and to fit it in the glasses frames properly, it was like, oh, I have to move the eyeball back. In painting, nothing is set in stone. Even after you're quote unquote finished with a painting and everything's dry, you can always go back and add more paint. However, you don't want to get into the habit of just continuing one painting. Sometimes it's like, all right, like right, I'm done with this painting and, and move on from there. And that's also always important. But for this sec section, um, now I'm starting to add in a little bit of the shadows, building out those base structures. I'm not a painter that really likes to block in everything from the beginning. So I'm not going to have a really fine detailed um, 
pencil sketch underneath. Because once again, once you're starting to add paint, you're going to lose all of those things. And it's going to become hard to sort of quote unquote paint by numbers. And you don't want to, you don't want to fall into the habit of that. So as I'm going through here, for my palette, I'm only using four colors. And it's a super reduced palette, super modified palette. I'm using vermilion as my red. I'm using yellow ochre as my yellow black as my quote-unquote blue, it's ivory black, and titanium white as my white. Um, this is a more uh, classical, you could say, palette um, that I'm working off of. And it lets you get a lot of different colors and a lot of things you didn't, you wouldn't think you could, could actually get from just these four base colors. Um, it's not the most extravagant or um, broad reaching for this example specifically um, but once again as you sort of progress with your um, skills and working with your paint you can always push those things extremely far um, I'm basically coming closer and closer to the end right now and I've moved from my big blocky brushes over to thinner paint brushes to get in these finer details. And what I'm also doing is I'm using thicker paint. I was also using very thin paint, just like pushing it into the canvas in the beginning. Now I'm using thicker paint and laying it on top of the old layer in the back. That really helps to bring out and keep these colors. Also helps to give and add that what we call painterly quality where you're like here's a brush stroke here's a brush stroke those are all really important pieces and keys to making a, a painting look like a painting you know we have uh, we have we all have a phone we can all take a picture we're we're making paintings we're not making photos um, so here it is pretty much done um, still have some of the pieces from the underneath and whatnot uh, but I, I like it. So if you guys like this, comment below, give it a like, um, you know, subscribe if you want to see more, and also just, just let me know what I can do to make these better, what I can do to, to improve. So I enjoyed that you guys watched. See you guys around.